Hey guys, time for another exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. Today is April the 3rd, 2015, and we're rolling on into the second quarter of the year. That's right, second quarter of 2015 is ready to roll. So we got a very limited show today. We're doing something very special today. It's a, it's a very special Stash Report. Usually this would be dealing with, like, I don't know, uh, you know, AIDS or cancer or you know, like when Edith Bunker was raped on All in the Family. Nah, we're going to have a lot more fun than that. Uh, so we got two uh, releases domestically, three actually, technically speaking, and uh, one import t- t- release to talk about. You notice we're on the fancy new camera. We're not on the other one, which means we're not going to do screen caps today. No, we're not. So uh, the two, well, the three domestic kits, Mobius, Ravel, and Round 2. I know Mobius. What? <laughs> oh, yes, Mobius. Uh, Mobius, since I just mentioned it, uh, has released officially. People have started to receive them at their homes, so it'll be in hobby shops within the next couple of days if it's not already. The 53 foot smooth side roller door trailer. Now, this is a retool version of the 53 foot, uh, Great Dane, because Great Dane didn't want their name attached to it at the end, uh, refrigerated trailer that was more of a, uh, owner operator spec trailer, was ribbed, which most, uh, Fleet trailers are not. They're smooth side composite wall or aluminum wall trailers. Uh, it was all chrome front wall, chrome rear door. This is a uh, roller door, which most people probably have the most experience with, like renting a U-Haul or like a Penske truck, where it has the little clasp that flips over like this, and the door rolls up. That's like a garage door. That's a roller door. So uh, if you build it as a uh, reefer trailer, you can, in fact, make it basically the same as 95% of the entire Walmart-dedicated grocery distribution fleet. Uh, the new ones of those just have, like, blue numbers on them and a DC, a distribution center uh, ID for what distribution center owns the asset. Uh, the older ones uh, prior to 2013 have, you know, very splashy Walmart graphics and things like that. So the pictures are out there. I don't know if anybody makes decals for them, but maybe you'll be able to talk somebody into making decals for them. Without the reefer stuff, it makes a great 53 foot dry van reefer, or dry van roller door trailer. UPS, FedEx, freight, uh, central transport, uh, Conway, freight, um, trying to think of what else. A- any local company, U.S. mail contractors use them a lot, I know for a fact. Uh, any local company does a lot of city work. Of course, probably for a local company, you're going to need a day cab. Uh, you know, and there's not a lot of modern rolling stock, so to speak, to use a railroading term for it. You know, you have the Lone Star and the Pro Star, and then maybe the Volvo from a Tallery, maybe the, the, uh, you know, the Peterbilt's from a Tallery, the, the Western Star Constellation. And after that, it gets kind of slim pickings unless you're doing like a show truck using one of the older cab overs, in which case, hey, you're doing a show truck. It can be whatever you want it to be. Uh, so there's that. Also, this month we're supposed to be getting the Hudson, the 54 Hudson Hornet Coupe, which is the, uh, 53 Hudson guts and with and mostly most of the interior with a brand new body attached to it. That's supposed to be out the third week of April. So that's the little news we got this week. And on the actual release side of things, uh, I I bet you this was actually out last week, but I looked it up under the wrong uh, marketing name, under the monogram name. The mo- box is a monogram kit. The 1940 Ford Standard Coupe is out. Uh, this is, guys, the factory stock version. You cannot build a drag car out of it. This is not attached to the 1940 Ford Street Rod kit. Uh, you can only do factory stock version of this. This kit has not been out since the mid-1990s, so it may be 20 years since this kit originally came out and had one run done, and then it was sort of parked in the dark corners of the warehouse because it didn't sell particularly well because it was just a factory stock car. It is monumentally better than the AMT 1940 kit, uh, you know, and with a little kit bashing, you can do pretty much whatever you want to with it. It doesn't have to stay factory stock. And then from round two, you're going to get the 1932 Ford Victoria. This actually ended up coming out Monday, right after the videos went up for the weekend. A friend of mine was like, hey, look what I bought. I thought you said this wasn't out. Well, it wasn't when we did the video. It came out Monday. So uh, the 52 Ford Victoria has been backdated or at least retooled several ways, several pieces to uh, – Recreate the 1960s kit. It's going to have uh, retooled drag wheels, retooled drag motor parts. Uh, the custom fenders have been recreated, as well as uh, pad printed slicks. Uh, there look like pad printed white walls in this kit as well from photo- contents I've seen recently, because I haven't actually seen the box of the kit to, to be able to look at it. 
And then you're going to get, of course, a reproduction of the vintage 1960s decals uh, and the retro box art from the 1960s. So that covers uh, the domestic stuff, and that also means that with the uh, Tamiya kit that came out over the over on Monday, all of the March kits came out that were scheduled to come out. Some stuff got delayed into April, but all the March stuff has check marks. So we are uh, happy there. Now, that leads us to overseas. So there was one overseas release. That was a Tamiya kit. That is, ho oh, oh, ho, oops, upside down. The Mercedes-Benz SL Gullwing. That's right. I have my dirty hands on one already. Came out Monday, FedEx Tuesday, arrived today. You're jealous. I know you are. So what we're going to do for the rest of this uh, episode, this very special stash board, is we're going to do a out-of-the-box review of this kit. So uh, hang tight. We're going to flip the camera around. We're going to do a little ELP, ELP-style uh little review here pardon the fact that i don't have like a professional studio set up so we're gonna have to work with what the light i have and the camera i have and all that stuff but hang in there we'll be right back all right guys welcome back to our unboxing <laughs> of the really large <laughs> i'm sorry the way i have the camera pitched for what i'm doing here you can't see it but this is the mercedes-benz 300 sl Reek. mercedes-benz 300 sl there we go all right, so uh, like uh, Elliot always says, uh, you know, you have your instructions. If you want to, you want to see them up close. I'll try to remember to throw a link up, like he does, to 1999 to uh, Hobby Search, so you can see these. This is an actual instruction booklet or her or instruction sheet rather than uh, an instruction booklet. You know, if you, if you look at an Enzo or something like that. You got the ones that are stapled in the middle. This is not. It's more of a traditional layout. You get a completely separate little sheet here. Of course, this is all in uh, you know Japanese, so it's you know nothing. But on the backside, it's English and French and German. Uh, but that has your big layout for your decals and for your uh, metal transfer layout and things like that. So we'll 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 kick a link to those. There's also a, a little correction sheet. Oh, <laughs> we screwed up the colors on the engine block. Maybe that was why it was delayed for a week. And uh, so you know. Yeah. Something sticky on my finger. You, uh, you got a set of masking seals as well as mesh for behind the grill. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty reasonably in scale. I don't think that's actually going to ever focus on that. And then back here, guys, is your metal transfers. There you go. It's actually pretty, pretty spiffy. So basically, it's a mirror face, a mirror surround, a rearview mirror, the Mercedes-Benz logo, and a little, uh, you know, obviously it's just a code there telling you what, what the sheet name is in case you ever need to reorder it. And then uh, I'm going to pitch this down directly at the table so I can hold this like this. Here is your decal sheet. It has a U.S. spec and European spec license plates. The square ones are U.S. spec, not Japanese spec for a change. Uh, you know, you got your gauges, your gauge clusters there. A lot of under the hood de decals for various uh, hoses and and parts of the firewall and stuff like that. The four little Mercedes Benz logos down there in the bottom are for the hubcaps, so uh, you don't have to try to paint the chromed hubcaps the body's color and keep the chrome at the same time. You can just put these decals back on. Now you may argue whether or not. That's going to look right, and it all really will depend on, in the end, whether or not those are the same size as the chrome sheet. I really haven't had a chance to, to uh, compare it. I really literally, literally just got this, uh, I don't know, two, three hours ago. I really haven't had a chance. To, you guys are really, literally, really legitimately going to get an honest review here because I have not actually even had a chance to look at this stuff. This will be, I will see it for the first time when you see it. And now I've got the mesh tangled up. There we go. So here are your tires and your polycaps. Apparently I need to dump this back up this way. Your tires and your polycaps all in one little thing here. Reasonably good tread detail. I had it in focus for a second there. There we go. 
Uh, these are new tires. They don't correspond to anything else in any of like the other historic series uh, kits, like the uh, Volkswagens or the Honda S800 or the Jaguar or anything else like that. There are no sidewall detail to these things. You got a little bit of like a side tread detail, but there's no actual like manufacturer's markings, no Michelin or Goodyear or anything else like that. So let's take a look at what we got here. Here's your clear tree. Uh, obviously, you've got your, you know, your big giant clear uh, chassis pan area there. Uh, you can leave that clear to see through if you want to uh, show through to the space frame. Or this gets painted a light gray in reality. Uh, this is the actual side you see. So there are some, uh, you know, some uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about ten ejector pins on here. Um, you know. Kind of an interesting thing where if you try to sand those off, uh, I think you'd probably get into a situation where you may not be able to uh, keep the surface detail. However, you really, I mean, you hold it up to the light. I realize you can't see it hold up to the light. Maybe you can if I hold it up this way. You can sort of kind of see them through. But they're not really as obvious as you'd think. If you do paint this gray, guys, it's going to cover everything on the bottom of the engine. Or on the bottom of the chassis. This hole right here is where the exhaust pipe sticks into. It goes down the side and then across the back and has a uh, has a yeah, yeah, exhaust tip out here. So you really legitimately lose all of the work you did underneath the car. You got some marker lights here, some marker lights here for, to make a U.S. spec car. Your headlights, your turn signals, your rear windows that have the masking seals, and then your back window. So tip this this way so you can actually see it. Your back window and your front window. And then if you really want to go the full-on Japanese route, you have side windows. Let's see. Here's your chrome runner. I really need to put something up so <laughs> you can't see behind me here. <coughs> Excuse me. That's why I coughed my lung up. Just now realize why he uses the backdrop so much. This is your chrome runner. Whoops. <laughs> there goes the camera. Look out. Chrome runner down. No, nope, actually, that was just the camera down. Uh, your chrome runner. Um, just, you know, a great deal of, of, of parts here, guys. There's, you know, all of your chrome on the side is separate. There's your gear shift down there. Um, your bumper. Uh, uh, oh, what would you call it? <laughs> bumper covers? That's not really what I'm looking for, but your uh, your uh, your uh, bumper guards up here is your are your wheels. Might help if I was panning this towards the camera instead of away from it, huh? Yeah. Maybe I'll take it out of the baggie. I hate taking my chrome stuff out of the bag, guys. You get scratched that way. There it goes. So there's your wheels. And those are your headlight surrounds. This big old thing right there, of course, is your dashboard. Now, a lot of people sort of complain about this being on the chrome tree. Uh, due to the fact that, you know, the the uh, actual dashboard itself needs to be uh, partially interior color and partially body color with only the bottom little strip there down by where it meets on the runner actually being chrome. And a lot of people said, well, I'm just going to dechrome the whole thing and I'll go from there. And the only problem with that is the fact that, of course, you would uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get this to cover up enough of the back. There we go. The no problem with that, of course, is the fact that all of these bezels, if I can get the focus again, come on, come on, you know you want to. All of those bezels, it's too shiny. It's too shiny. Here it goes. All those bezels around the gauge clusters are chrome in real life. So you'd have to not only chrome this little strip down there at the bottom, but you'd also have to, you know, chrome. Let 
Chrome eGever. Something to point with here. You also have to Chrome every single one of these uh, gauge clusters. Every single one of these would need to be re-chromed. And are you that good with bare metal foil that you can handle chroming all those little ding-dongs and doodads? Probably not. <laughs> Let's face it. Uh, your grill. Really delicate, really nice. A lot of these parts are really delicate. I'm kind of watching how I have to handle this here. And you have all of these. This is your exhaust tip right here. You have all these little fine parts on here that I would actually need to get the instructions out to look at to see what all they are. <laughs> Very finely detailed windshield wipers there. Very nice. Overall, the the kit chrome is very good. It's not. Uh, it's very shiny, but it's not very thick. So it's very in scale. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, situations where you're going to look at this and go, "Oh, this reminds me of 1990s AMT Ertl kit chrome." It's all thick and yucky. One nice thing about this, and you know, you look at these bumpers and you're like, "Ah, oh, these bumpers are mounted in a lousy direction." Look at that. They're all attached at the bottom and the top of the chrome tree. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. They're all attached to the it, it allows you points. But guys, if you if you don't realize how these things are mounted, you don't haven't built any uh you know, Asian kits recently. They're actually mounted behind I don't know how well this is gonna show. They're actually mounted behind the part, not on top of the part. So when you're cutting these off, you have to get a very good pair of sprue cutters. You can't be hacks on these things off with a hobby knife or a razor knife. You need a pair of sprue cutters so that you actually can cut them off from that nub that they're mounted to from behind the bumper. So you do not lose any chrome plating on the you know, actual bottom or top of the bumper. Uh, this is the way that most Asian companies have been uh, taking care of their wheels for years now. So you don't cut part of the wheel lip off when you cut the wheels off the, the uh the sprues that they're on, uh, and all of the cr there's, you know the chrome trim for the side pieces here again. See, it's attached to the back of the sprue rather than the actual bottom of the sprue. Uh, you know, good pair of Tamiya sprue cutters here. I will say that the actual grill itself is attached to the grill, not to the backs of the grill, but uh, the grill is going to be sinking into the gr grill surround, so you're not going to notice that as much. Let me re-bag this so I don't break anything, because oh, it's so very delicate. That's the other reason you need a good pair of sprue cutters, is because these parts are are really delicate. The windshield wipers and, and a lot of those fine parts on the bottom there, the little, little uh, pieces of the interior and exterior. And you don't want to be cutting those off with a hobby knife and, and busting them in half and stuff. So if you do not own a good pair of sprue cutters, uh, now would be, and you have one of these coming, you do not want to be calling up to me a USA going, I need another chrome runner because I busted the windshield wiper off, and then I cut the side, the side uh, spear in half, and, you know, <laughs> I've just generally made a cluster F out of this entire model kit. Let's take a look at the at the money shot here. Something that everybody wants to see. Go ahead, take this out of the baggie. I'm, I apologize for the slow walk of this. It's not prepared like uh, anybody else's because we are literally, like I said, I'm seeing this for the first time when you are. So here's the body, guys. Now, a lot of people have complained that the trunk isn't molded open because ooh, the 1960s one was molded open. Eh, the doors are open. That's that's good enough for me. Once you start getting into the really wacky amounts of open parts, and you start getting into fit issues where you know, things don't don't fit like they're supposed to anymore. So you got some nice, uh, you know, nice dunnage, as we call it in the trucking industry, to keep your body from from squishing. Uh, you know, got a little torque to it if you push, put some pressure on it. But you've got basically thick cutouts in the window, in the windshield, the rear window, the doors, and the hood here. So this isn't going to go anywhere in storage. It won't warp just hanging out. 
Um, looking at the bottom side here, guys, the there are no ejector pins in the actual roof of the kit itself in the parts here in the interior. Now, there is a, a piece that will go over this area here that pins your doors in so that they don't roll away, but uh, the ejector pins on the bottom of this are pretty well hidden. You really have to look for them. They're for, very faint and uh, not going to require a lot of inside cleanup. You know, you get a lot of this... A lot of kits that uh, the ejector pins are like four great big holes on the inside of your roof, and you, if you want to, you know, do contest work with them, you're gonna have to try to clean all that up. Uh, let me see. I'll hold this close to me so I can see from mold lines. Okay, mold lines go down the top edge of the fender right here. You can feel them. This one's a little more prominent than the right side one, but again, it's nothing that any basic body prep will cover. They do go down from the, uh, let me get my little, get my little pointer out here. They do go from the, the turn signal down the front fascia there, and they come across this area here. They ride the trunk line, so they disappear, but then they do come out across the corner and down right there. Again, very faint, nothing major. Nothing that you're going to be sitting there wishing that you hadn't spent the $28. Although, guys, you know, you do buy this in the United States, it is going to cost you $72. That is the manufacturer's suggested retail price on this from Tamiya USA is $71.99. And that's the retail price, so that doesn't have any markup in it. So be aware, this $28.68 is what the current exchange rate is on Hobby Link Japan to buy this kit. So, uh... You know, be 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 aware of what you're purchasing. This is going to be, let's see, uh, some suspension, some wheels, and some body parts. <clears throat> Down here, you've got your rear differential. Nice engraving on that. You've got your license plate bucks for both the U.S. spec and the European spec. Uh, your drive shaft. Drum brakes, obviously, on a car this old. Nice. Nice uh, little sort of side engraving to the drum brakes. Here's your wheels, two sets, obviously, of, to get four. Uh, they are they are molded open, so you don't have to worry about trying to clean up the, the backside. It's kind of hard to see. There we go. And so they are molded open. Uh, your, this is a two-piece gas tank, and, you, and part of the inner fenders for the... Uh, rear of the car because the inner fenders for the front of the car are on there this is the piece i was talking about that covers your the inside that covers your doors uh and this is your door panel Woo. as well as your doors themselves some very fine uh work there to get the you know the uh vent uh, support in there that is going to be extremely delicate guys so you're going to take care you know be careful with that i do like how it's kind of hard to see i can get an end on here that the sprues themselves the sprue itself down here where the doors are is actually curved with the doors so you don't have to worry about it uh warping out of shape because the runner is flat and the doors are curved uh your side Side intakes or your side gills, however you want to look at them. Of course, mold it open. When you look at the back side of the parts here, guys, I need to take a close look so I know what I'm talking about. There are going to be a number of uh, ejector pins on the inside of the hood. That's kind of disappointing. I was hoping that with this great big prong in the middle here that they would be able to keep that from happening. But they're not very deep. They're certainly not uh, anything that you would be, like, you know, disappointed in. I mean, it's just the nature of the beast, you know, the, with everything being concave and convex on here. You see, you can't even see them, and that is in focus, so you can't even see them. But there's uh, like one here, one here, and then one here. So there's like six uh, around the edge 
on the bracing part. There's none on the actual underneath of the hood. So with some very delicate sanding and, uh, you know, shading the, the bracing a different color than I think the bracing is a different color than the underside of the hood, you might be able to uh, hide that fairly well without too much problem. And there's really only two parts runners left here. All right, thank God, right? It's been 20 minutes. We've got nothing done. These are the, the uh, I need to back, I'll back this thing up because I won't be able to show the entire runner at once. There, there's your entire, basically all the, the uh, chassis. This is all the space frame. The, you know, this over here is your wheel uprights and your uh, spring shackles and your uh, A-arms and stuff like that. But all of this is upper and lower space frame, inner front and inner rear space frame. Uh, just a just a hoot nanny of tubing right there. That's what that is. You've also got your springs down here. Whoops, I probably need my background so it doesn't bleed out. Sure. I'm having yeast rolls tonight. That's what that question was about, why I just said sure. <laughs> um, let me take a quick peek here. There are faint mold lines, as you'd expect on anything tubular in a model kit, right? I mean, you're gonna, you know, this is essentially a, a rolling roll cage, so you're gonna get stuck with, you know, having to sand the mold lines off the tops and the bottoms of all this tubing. I will say, however, guys, that the this is the bottom side, right? They have really gone an extra mile here, and it's kind of hard to see in the video. I can't make it really show, but there are a number of actual. Uh, bottom pins to this whole tr whole parts runner, especially around this big space frame area, where the ejector pins were hitting these extension pins, and all around the edge of these frames, it's all ejector pin markings. But the actual frames themselves uh, really appear to be spared any kind of uh, savage beating by the ejection machine. So uh, it looks like you will not have a situation where you're going to need to sit around and really fill in a lot of divots all over the space frame. So excellent work there. And that leaves us with one parts runner left. And that is the interior and the engine. Uh, your, interior, uh, your interior sort of pan, if you want to call it that, it's basically just room for the seats and the rear package shelf, and then has the inner fenders, uh, the bottom side there. Okay. Again, if you paint the uh, bottom side of the uh, chassis tray, you're never going to see any of this anyway. <laughs> but uh, it does appear that uh, there's two ejector pins on the uh, like the base of the inner fenders itself, but other than that, you know, nothing's there. I've heard a lot of complaining about the fact that the seats do not have backs, and they don't. The seats do not have backs. They are one-piece seats. But if you look at how they're going to fit in there, I mean, the seat frame, the seat frame is right up against the actual back of wall of the interior. And the seats are pretty low. They're not as high like a, a bucket seat like you'd traditionally expect. I really don't think, really don't think that you'd really be able to see them. Now, it'll take a little test fitting to get it in there and see, you know, how much is, it's in there. But based on, you know, how big a, a, uh, how big a C pillar this kit has and how, you know, how low the interior is and, you know, the seat pillar really is true, very thin, you know, in the sense of, whoops, this is not going the, towards the camera, that I'm going, I'm talking to myself. The seat pillar, you know, very thin on here, but with the door in place, it's got a pretty thick door, you know, kind of a minimal window. I don't know that you'd be able to see it. If you can, if you could see it, you know, cardstock is going to fix that real quick for you. So let's take a look at the other parts here. You've got, uh, like, fuel injector rail. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> this is really kind of a big part runner. It's not exactly the most, uh, uh, how should we say? It's not the most uh, easy to handle thing. <laughs> so we're going to take it out of this bag. Let's tip down this way again. So uh, let's see, where were we? Oh, yes. You got your injector rail. That's pretty nice. Let's see if I can put this up. I promise if I ever do another one of these reviews, I'll be more prepared. <laughs> I'm completely impo perfectly focused on that little thing of laser printing on the inside of the box. <laughs> Thanks, camera. I appreciate that. All right, well, moving along. <laughs> You have your dash top. Your let's flip it this way. Your steering wheel. Uh, let's see. Your pedals. Uh, let's see. There's door hinges, hood hinges, uh, hood prop. Uh, your distributor cap, starter, uh, over here, your fan, your front, jeez, uh, that's just an awful, <laughs> an awful scenario. I have no light showing whatsoever. Let's fix that. It's going to make it even more shadowy, but it'll, it'll work for this purpose. Your front carrier there, uh, generator. Fan, a reservoir of some sort. <laughs> I really don't have the, the parts layout in front of me. Uh, your engine block has nice fine detailing work to it there. Uh, your your radiator, your your big uh, intake plenum or plenum, depending on how you pronounce that, in your neck of the woods, your firewall, and uh, one part of the uh, header. If I can find the other part of the header on here, I'm not sure where. Um, a little little uh, radiator piping there. Ah, well, that's what that was down here. Here's your other part of your header down here. So it's a, it's a three-piece uh, exhaust header. And then you have uh, over here, as I was saying, the your exhaust. Oops, it's not actually going to show because it's too close. Or, there we go. Your uh, big, long piece here is your exhaust pipe. Like I said it makes the big, long S-curve and then exits out the back there. Uh Just trying to just trying to show parts without talking. Just obviously the top of your cylinder head there is your front cover of the engine there. Your uh, hinges actually have uh, some nice rivet <laughs> have some nice rivet detail to the hinges there. Uh, maybe we'll be able to see the intake runner. There you go.
<laughs> anyway, guys, so uh, 29 minutes later, I apologize that you had to put up with that. But hopefully that gives you a reasonably good idea. <laughs> Excuse me. A reasonably good idea what's in the box. Uh, you know, usually I, I have a couple of those filmed from a real long time ago where I did, like, inbox reviews of the 69 Nova and uh, a couple other things, and they were really professionally done, and I was all like, ooh, look at this, look at this, look at this. Like I said, guys, I haven't had a chance to even look at this kit prior to right now, so uh, you saw it when I saw it. Uh, many apologies for shaky camera and everything else, but uh, we hope you enjoyed that little uh, <laughs> that little exercise in futility there. We'll see you guys on the other side.